What is going on lads and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to prepare for season two of Dream Team. So a lot of the information in this video is going to be very basic, especially to guys that are veterans of the series or that have played a lot of Dream Team and season one. For, but for guys coming over that are newcomers or have downloaded the game in the last couple of days and are getting ready for season two, which looks to add a load of new content and stuff, it's a really good place to, to kick on and, and to, to jump into. We're going to get a look at a lot of the game settings and how to set your team up and a lot of basic stuff that will help you out in the long term so firstly we're going to go to game settings we're going to have a look at the match screen we're going to have a look at our controller settings right i would recommend having a play around with these yourself so if you want to change you know your shoot button from square to o or you want to change your true ball to whatever you want to change it to or your goalkeeper pressure or your shoulder charge your sliding tackle um you can change all of those there's also presets there for fifa style controller settings now i know that spoonie ricky and true brits among others have done very detailed um controller settings but for me personally i think you only need to focus on uh on two of them right so the first one is cursor change semi-assist unassisted or assisted so semi-assist when attacking the cursor will switch automatically when defending it is generally switched manually so you're in control of what player you want to pick defending and when you're attacking it'll choose which player you ever pass the ball to unassisted you need to choose both and assisted is everything is automatic so for me i would always choose semi-assisted i want to be fully in control of when i'm defending who i'm actually defending with what player i'm switching to um so i would leave it on that but have a play around with your yourself cursor type that's not really needed that just depends if you want the player's name so if you want Ronaldinho's name over his head you can have that or else you can turn it off next up we've got the manual cursor change type so whether that is changing the cursor you can choose to have the ball or the player to be the base point so wherever the camera is going to lay in and wherever you're going to have the actual like point of reference of where the where the cursor type is going to cursor type is going to be now next up we've got the most important one in my opinion is manual pass level right if you want fully manual, it's level four. Level three is like your auto assist with power and accuracy, but everything else is manual. Then this is auto assist, adjust the power, pass power and accuracy using L and the pass button. And then level one. So it's actually flipped from PES 2021. So auto assist is level one. Um, and then down level two is uh, slightly less assisted. Level three is even less assisted. So you have to adjust the power even more. Um, so you can pick between two and three. I would recommend maybe three to get the feel for the game. It'll improve you as a player. Shoulder charge or standing tackle as the tackle type. Again, I would leave this at default, lads, genuinely. I think that the shoulder charge is... It's a bit gimmicky at the moment, you know, and I know that they're going to fix up a couple of things. We will have to revisit this when V1.1 update comes, but for now, I think it is a little bit gimmicky. And the rest of the stuff, manual passing, target guide, faint command type, you can just leave that as normal and don't think too much about it and leave it as is. So we're going to actually jump over here now to the camera settings, right? So a lot of people would will definitely appreciate using dynamic wide. That's, I think, the best camera overall. Um, it's close enough that you can dribble. It's far enough away that you can play possession. I mean, we're looking at stadium here. It's really nice. Mid range is too too close. Long is too close. Wide is too close, in my opinion. The live broadcast is actually quite nice as well. The fan view is quite nice. If you are into kind of if you've played a lot of FIFA and you want a wider pitch to, to spray the ball around, and you're not too worried about like one v ones or dribbling or tight possession play, the rest of them are really kind of basic. Now you can um, customize that as well in in game. But when we go over here to our squad, right, I would just to close that one out, lads, I would definitely recommend Dynamic Wide. But when we go over to our squad here, I'm going to show you a couple of little things, right? So you can see here our team playstyle level is at 100, right? And you can see that our players have got quite a boost from having that playstyle at level 100. So you will see that Romario, when he is when the team playstyle is 99, Romario is 98 overall. Um, you can see that, you know, Neymar and them is 97. When we bring in Salah in here, the team play style goes down. So that like overall is going to stay the same. But if you have your team play style at level 100, that is when your team is going to be at its maximum. But it doesn't make a difference. I'm going to be doing a, an individual video to this. But I think what I'm kind of just showing here is to just get your team set up with a mixture of, you know, high statistical players that have really good attributes, really good stats, pace, whatever. Like your wingers need pace and dribbling. Your right back and your left back need stamina and defensive um, ability as well as pace your attacker midfielder needs passing your center midfielder needs to be a workhorse your dmf or if you're playing two cmfs you need one ball winner and one kind of like orchestrator 
I've done a lot of videos on this already, but it's fairly self-explanatory. You're playing your best players in your best position, and you're trying to get as many people in with live updates. Now, if you look at Salah there, right, he's got 69 team play style level that it, with this manager, right? He's 69 rating overall as you can see. So he's 97 overall stat-wise, but he's 69 for uh, his team playstyle proficiency. So make sure and you boost that up and you're going to see that this will have an impact on his actual ability uh, to play in that squad with the chosen manager that I have. So don't neglect when you're training up a player, don't have him like, oh, he's 90 pace, but he's like 55, um, you know, a wide uh, play style or whatever. So make sure you have a look at that as well. As I said, I will drop a couple of videos at the end of this video that you should definitely check out if you want more information on this next up again very 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 like self-explanatory but make sure and you guys do over the next couple of days make sure and you do all the events literally do all the events i think at the time including the starter cup i think you can do you can get about five hundred thousand gp from doing all the events if uh, if you do them right and you do them effectively some games you can literally like this one you can just like get points for just playing matches you don't even need to win you know what i mean this spanish cup you can just play this um and like literally not even win the games you just pick a team you just play your matches learn you know how to how to do things and you know test out different players and you'll still get the same rewards if you lose 10 nil or if you win 10 nil it doesn't really make a difference right so i definitely recommend doing all the events Next up as well, you've got all the other events you can see there just as we close that off, 10,000 GP for playing one match and you also get the training points. Now the training points I think are the most important aspect of trying to prepare for season two, right? You will want to like have your team, any player that you have that has a little uh, circle beside them with an orange circle with like their training points there, we'll see here, you can go in here and press triangle to change and sort whatever way you want to do it, you can filter everything or whatever. We'll have a look here at the players that we currently have that are able to be boosted up. So we'll go back out here and we're going to take a quick look at, uh, say, the, the players that we have that are able to be boosted up. So you'll see Donnarumma there, right? The rest of my players, Romario and um, Piol and uh, Maldini, they're already boosted up to the, to, the, to the end. But these guys here that you're seeing here, so Van Dijk, Diaz, Pedri... Them guys there, um, they've got they've got like a lot of potential that they are. They've got a lot of points that do that we can use up. So we're going to go into that player into Pedri, and we're going to boost him up, train him up, however that you want. So make sure that you don't leave any of your training points behind. Now, last but not least, my biggest tip is to probably go in to the training mode, which can be accessed from the settings and go into training and go into the free training. And then you're just going to be playing. Now you're going to be focusing on a couple of things in the training, right here. Um, the first thing I would probably focus on is when we don't have possession of the ball or, or sorry, when we do have possession of the ball, just learn. I think what's the best thing is learn when to pass the ball, learn how to draw a man in, learn when to drag a man in. So if you're dragging two players in, you've already instantly created a mismatch or an overlap if you move the ball quick enough. And that's what eFootball 22 is all about. It's yeah, it's still quick counter and it's still one touch passing and it's still, you know, little triangles and tiki taka and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I understand that, that there is, that is kind of the meta, you know, playing 4-3-3, three, three, um, you know, or 3-4-3 or three, three even. But I do think that when you, you can, you can also win. I mean, if you guys have watched my Dream Team Chronicle series, like I have gotten to Vision, to Division 1 um, by playing a 4-5-1. So like one striker up front and playing really kind of like wing play, like out wide, like hugging the touchline, trying to dominate on the wings and cut in and stuff like that without being spammy, without having to do one, two passes and all that sort of stuff. So when we don't have the ball here, we're going to be focusing on uh, our DMF, right? So we're going to be focusing here into this position of the area here where Sergio Busquets is. So you see where Busquets is there. He's right into the into the position. Now, a lot of the time, obviously, you're playing against the AI here. A lot of the time when you're playing online, right, if you are coming up against a guy that is absolutely brilliant and he has your number and he's just a better player than you, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, you're not going to win every game. You're going to lose, you know, some games to guys that play 20, 30 hours a week. You're going to lose to guys that are just, you know, naturally better at the game than you. And you have to accept that, that you can't win every game. No matter how good you are, there's always going to be somebody out there better than you at the game, no matter what you do with your team, no matter what squad you have, um, you know, but you can also set yourself up that if you kind of become determined, like you'll see here where I am with Busquets, right? If you become like, if, if it becomes second nature for you, that when you don't have the ball, that you're kind of sitting into this hole where Busquets is here, 
like it's kind of, think of it kind of like Busquets kind of in a Cloud Makalele role. You can do that with any DMF. Now, I would recommend having somebody that's like an anchor man and put an anchor on him and defensive stuff like that. But you can do it with anybody because again, every time that you have this, it's not only acting as a as a kind of an extra CB without him actually without playing five at the back. Um, but you're also kind of orchestrating everything with long passes. You know, you can get used to the passes. So straight away when we lose the ball here, we're going to get back into our formation. We're going to run back with Busquets. The ball breaks down. Even if it doesn't, Busquets is there and then he starts the attack again. So I would definitely just check out, you know, training mode, lads. Um, you know, while you're waiting for season two, check out training mode, have a look at it, have a play around with it and just concentrate on a couple of things. Concentrate on drawing a player or two in and then passing the ball to create overlaps and to create little pockets of space. And then also when you don't have the ball, just give the ball to the opposition and practice just setting up your defensive line so that your DMF or your CMF or whatever position you're playing uh, or formation you're playing, that you're able to kind of like, um, you know, naturally react to that because you are going to concede goals even if you do everything right anyway but you can limit a lot of the silly goals that you concede so that's probably the biggest thing that i would say i would much rather start off my e-football career by being a very solid difficult to break down opponent that isn't scoring that many goals compared to like every match being like 4-3 and it's a lottery between whether i'm going to win or not i want to control the pace of my games i want to control how the opponent is attacking me um and shut down areas that I, you know, I, you know, want to shut down. So yeah, it's always about learning. So lads, that is it for me. Again, a lot of the information in this is very self-explanatory and it's very simplified for new or for veterans of the series. Um, so I do appreciate that this video is probably for new newcomers and stuff. I could do one on an advanced, um, you know, stuff as well, but season two will be out by then. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back quite soon. Having a couple of issues with my PC that should be sorted now, but we will be back soon. Corona has a, has, a, has a big announcement to make quite soon, so we'll be back for Dream Team Chronicles. But anyway, lads, that is it for me. Talk to you later. Peace.